Okay, according to the instructions, we were supposed to put anti-seize on a first approximately 8, 10 inches, and that's the part that slides into the aluminum housing. That's basically to keep the two units from over time with weather conditions starting to build up a some type of a corrosion that might cause them to stick to each other. That way, if it needs to come apart for servicing again, it should come apart easier. That was the gray coloring that was on the... Uh... Now, we need to... You need that little flashlight? Yes. Okay, you got to come in quite a way, Shea, about another two inches. It acts Oops. like it won't come in. There, there you go. Okay, there. okay now. You got to come out to about probably this right, white right about mark there. here. Okay, I'll rotate it uh, there. Now in just the hair. In, okay, hold it, hold it right there. You're in far enough. Now rotate it counterclockwise. There, hold it there a second. I'm going to stick one bolt in. And the tapered end of these bolts, that went all the way in by hand, the tapered end of these bolts line up. Now, Can you show me that again, Bill? The tapered end of this bolt actually goes into the drilled hole in that shaft that, that we just put the anti-seize on okay. for perfect alignment. We, we spotted through the hole to make sure they lined up according to the pictures. Okay. All right. all right, we're installing the blades now, and we're adding an extra step. We put removable Loctite 242 on the fasteners because inaccessible bolts like this that are way up in the air it's just an extra insurance step and, our, and it doesn't make it hard to come off it just makes it positive that there won't be any loosening of it and our job experience on various equipment just di kind of dictates this anything that's got a vibration possibility and your job experience just happens to be what guys you don't have to tell your company but uh, in the engineering well, department? This way. We design satellite systems and you don't tighten the bolts on them very easily. <laughs> <laughs> Not more than once. <laughs> Between the two of these guys, they have seven patents, folks. We just loctited the threads on the tall bolt coming out of the swivel joint that goes into the shaft that protrudes through the center of the blade. Sounds kind of complicated. Well, you? it's not too bad of a project at the moment. We got everything propped at the right height, so it works pretty darn easy for us. Okay. It just takes a little bit of cranking because it's about three quarters inch of thread that we have to screw in there. And we put lock, blue Loctite on them so that any vibration, they should be just fine. Now in the past when the blades have been put on they've been had to be kind of a pressure downward pressure arm did we do that this time? Upward. Upward. Upward, upward pressure. Yes speed. sir we, we did. We did that but that was our own feeling on how it helps. Not quite so important on this new one because it seemed like the um, holes in the hub and the shaft arm or uh, blades was a much better match than the previous version. And notice we still have the big nut on there. Is that for any reason? That's it's going to come off here shortly. It's a safety thing when we were putting the rotor hub on. We can just take that off now because it's actually bearing on the springs anyway. That'll be dis... Okay, I got it spun up by finger. Now you're tightening it the rest of the way. Now that's pretty close right there. Like the correct direction then? Yeah. I'd almost lock it there because that's top to top tip is just right yeah. on a quarter to me. Adjust an open build because it's only 316. I haven't done enough of them to know which way to turn that yet to tell me if I'm going the wrong way. Other way. First pull the cord on the drapes so I send them in the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, Bill is setting a preload in it there and you note that the gap here is beginning to close up and the blade's nearly flush. It is flush now, Bill. That's right at my, that right at my two turns. Yep. Uh, notice here, this is where we show the quarter inch. See the one inch mark now? I'm on that. And now Bill's going to begin to close it. And you'll note the blade gap is closing up there as he turns that, that two turns they're talking about in the instructions. And then when he's done, you'll see that the blade's tip is flush with the blade body. I don't know how well this is show up, it's but we, real good, we put a black mark on the nut after we had it set at the quarter inch spacing that they wanted. And then I turned it the two turns to finish tightening the blade up to the closed position. Now that that's been turned, we take, without moving that flat location of that flat nut, and use the different wrenches 
and tighten up the jam nut to hold that spacing in place. And it kind of takes a combination of wrenches here so you can get it snug without altering the nut location there which controls the blade distance. There's certain kinds of hydraulic pumps that have variable speeds. And I think we're good. And then, okay, we're going to put the synchronizer plate on now. I'm going to pop it up around the springs and then these heim joints go in like this is what we understand. Nuts on top? And the nuts go on top. Oh, they go, on the, they go up like from the bottom. Okay. That's what Keith was thinking. That's what the picture shows? As soon as we get all three nuts started, we'll have, have to adjust the linkage you know, right. to get them in. Okay, I need a third nut. And then mine will two will be started. Well, we're attaching the final three swivel couplings to the outside part of the synchronizing plate. The first one you put in has what we found to be adjusted. And the second two you kind of adjust their length so they slip in easily because the first two first one dictates their location. Then we're on scene here. We've got the trouting on. I'm demonstrating the governing mechanism in here by pulling out the counterweights and the clearance and the clearances and stuff. Now go down by the blade tip and continuing. Now when we govern it you can see that all three of the blades are doing the same thing at the same time equally. They're going to have to take our word for that. Alrighty, we're ready to raise We're this going ball. back up folks. <laughs>